In this video, I'm going to show you how to read and interpret a right spirometer. Okay? This is our right spirometer with a mouthpiece attached to the bottom of it. Right? First step in reading a right spirometer is actually getting a reading on it. And to do that, you're going to turn on the right spirometer, power button over here on this model, and you're going to make sure that the dial is set to zero. In order to do that, you push the button over here. In that manner, it's very similar to a stopwatch. What you're going to do is you're going to have your patient breathe into the mouthpiece normally, okay? This is kind of difficult to do because they're going to be aware of their breathing and because of that they're probably going to be breathing more and deeply than usual. But for the case of spirometry, we're just going to ignore that fact and take the numbers that we get, okay? You can have a patient breathe for a full minute to get a true minute ventilation or you can have them breathe for 30 or 14 or 15 seconds and multiply it by two or four respectively, okay? For this video, I'm gonna breathe into the right spirometer for 15 seconds and multiply everything I get by four, okay? All right, here we go. Okay, right, I'm gonna turn off the right spirometer now after the 15 seconds to make sure that I don't alter my readings. Okay, my right spirometer reads as follows. what my right spirometer reads. Interpreting a right spirometer is very similar to interpreting a manual clock, right? The black hand here is going to be like your hour hand, and for our purposes it represents the liters breathed in that amount of time, okay? The red hand here represents the number of milliliters breathed in the allotted time, okay? So reading mine, we've got one, two, three, four, five, and six. This hand has landed right between the five and the six liters, okay? So just like a regular clock, we're going to round this, the big hand back to the five. All right, so we're looking at five liters. Five point, point seven down here, okay? I'm going to say that this actually landed right on the, uh, the, the 2 here. So this is 0 0.72, so 720 milliliters. All right. And because I did my breathing for 15 seconds, I'm going to multiply this number by 4. All right. Naturally, I've come up with quite an awkward number to do in your head. So five. multiply that by 4, so 4, 12, 16, so my respiratory rate was 16, which is well within normal limits, however kind of high for me, alright? Taking this information, we're going to determine my tidal volume, so we're going to divide 22.8 liters per minute by 16 breaths per minute, and we're going to get uh, 1.425, alright, 1.425. Two five liters per breath. <laughs> All right, so roughly one point four liters is my tidal volume. All right, that is interpreting the right spirometer and calculating for tidal volume using minute ventilation divided by respiratory rate. If you just wanted to get a tidal volume. You would just have the patient breathe into it once. Breathe in, breathe out, and that's your tidal volume. Okay. 
the minute ventilation, the tidal volume, and the respiratory rate can be used to calculate a uh, patient's minimum flow needs for use with a large volume nebulizer. These numbers can also be used to uh, estimate a patient's appropriateness for different uh, aerosol devices, whether they're appropriate to use a dry powder inhaler, a metered dose inhaler, or a handheld nebulizer. The numbers themselves may not be indications for each of these therapies, but your ability to explain and for the patient to understand are the true indications. Okay, that's reading a right spirometer. Miss Sage. Okay. Hello.